So how can machine learning uh, used by companies like Overjet improve this situation and turn dentistry into more of a science? Yeah, no, uh, that's a really good question, John. So especially in uh, dentistry, it, it's present all, uh, in other healthcare fields as well, where diagnosis, uh, there's a lot of variation in diagnosis in general. So two dentists looking at the same information might disagree with each other on what they're seeing. A lot of it is because it is, uh, you know, they're eyeballing distances and measurements, they're making subjective decisioning. And this is where computer vision really comes into play for us. And especially what Overjet does, which is quantify disease. So uh, at Overjet, we actually quantify disease rather than just detecting disease. Uh, right. So for example, if we're talking about uh, bone loss, it's a measurement, uh, you know, that, that's a bone level above a certain threshold. And once you can measure it, now you're talking about, you know, we both can agree anything above, say, 2.5 millimeters is, will be considered bone loss. And once we measure it, uh, there's no subjectivity there. So what we're doing at Overjet is we're quantifying disease that helps us make very objective decisions that help, that help us make uh, better decisions for the patients themselves. And uh, that helps move the industry more towards uh, a science and also move move towards more evidence-based dentistry as well. Super cool. I love that. So it's not just classification. We're kind of, we've, as machine learning practitioners, we see lots of examples, even in kind of early machine vision problems and data sets that we work with, we're often working with classification. So, you know, is there a tumor present in this tissue or not? Um, in your case, it could be, is there a cavity present in this image or not? And so Overjet goes beyond that. It's not just image classification, it's quantification. It's saying, uh, yeah, how many millimeters of bone loss do we have? Um, how large and- is the cavity? How does that interact with the rest of the, the tooth, for example? Uh, similar to like, uh, or, or you do detection as well, right? So you'll say, okay, is there a cavity in this particular area? That That's one, but then we go a step further and we say, you know, how large it is, how it re- relates to the anatomy, how much of that crown area of the tooth uh, has been decayed, uh, so we can actually get to very accurate decisioning uh, based on uh, the, the measurements. 